Hello, hello, good evening. Can you hear me? Good evening. Good evening. How are you? How's your day? How was your day going? It's fine, teacher. It's fine. That's wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. It's still missing just one minute to get us started. So, um, I don't know. We are just only you, one, one classmate more and me. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, just only three, but with you three, I'm going to get us better. It's a pleasure to meet you, right? I am Marta and I'm going to be with you all of this time that it's going to be one month. So let's uh, see. I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, we are going to wait just a couple of seconds while we are giving just the introduction to the course while maybe some of your classmates go ahead and get joined as well. So this is intermediate uh, module, the module number one. And according to the scheduling that I have or the one that I was sending to you um, today in the morning, we are gonna be from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. for weeks, right? We started today, that is August the 24th, and we are gonna finish on September the 20th. That is gonna be on Monday. Um, the first evaluation, or in this case, not an evaluation, but the test that is on the virtual platform, we are going to be exploring it or taking care of it. It's going to be on September the 2nd. And then the final one that is going to be the final test is going to be on Monday, September the 20th, exactly the last day of the module, right? We are going to have five sessions on it. Uh, yes, go ahead, Gerardo. Uh, uh, the first evaluation is is the middle test on the platform. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same, right? Um, okay. Here, the evaluation is the same ones that you have in the virtual platform, the midterm exam, and the final one. So okay. you're not gonna be worried about it. There is not any extra evaluation on it. So that's okay. the only thing that we are gonna be studying on. So as well, uh, we're gonna have five sessions, right? Uh, the first session is called a time to remember. The second one, count in the rush. And the third one, time for a change. Session number four is, I've never heard that. I never heard of that. And session number five is going places. That's the name of the session, right? In the different sessions, we are gonna be studying different grammar topics and different as well vocabulary on it. Is there any questions so far about this? Um, just a slide about this slide. Any question or any doubt that you might have about this one or the dates, the time? No, is everything clear? clear. Awesome. Clear. Good. So there are some things that I would like you uh, to remember. This first week, we are going to have it. Uh, from Tuesday, that is today, the 24th, after Friday, that it's going to be the 27th, the only first week. Then the second one and the third one, we are going to have it from Monday to Thursday, that are the normal schedule. And in the uh, week number four, we are going to have on September the 25th, that is a Wednesday, there is no class, right? So because it is a holiday and we are going to have it off. So that is something that we need to remember just for this first week is going to be from today, Tuesday up to Friday, the 27th. And the second and the third week is going to be the same schedule from Monday to Thursday. And on the first week, there is going to be just one exception that is going to be on September the 15th. That is the holiday, right? So we are going to be off that day. So to pass the curse, right, or in this case, you need the 80% of your virtual platform. I invite you to you that you can place a target that instead of the 90%, instead of the 80 can be a 90% or more, right? So as long as it's going to be possible for you getting to the conferences, because in that one, we discuss the topics. I know that on the virtual platform, there is always uh, the explanation on the grammar one, but as well in the conference, you're going to have 
some other opportunities to practice. And the last one is don't give up, right? We need to go ahead and keep going like the image in the chat says today. So is there any question regarding to this? Hay alguna pregunta acerca de esto, just in case. Is there any question? No. All right. I so have a question. Go ahead. The course, the course is finally in September 18. Oh, no. It's going to be finishing on September the 20th. That is going to okay. be on Monday. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Yes. Okay, Thanks. Yeah. You're more than welcome. Yes, so remember that is exactly 16 conferences, right? And if we count from the 24th and if we finish on the 18th, it's just going to be just only 15 conferences instead of 16. So on Monday, the 20th, we are going to just like a kind of repetition of the September the 15th, right? Just to keep going with the 16 conferences according to the hours of the course. So that it will be. And as well, right, uh, go ahead and keep going on your virtual platform. You might get it started, right? There is not any problem on it. You already know how does it work. And I'm always here to help you. Is there any question regarding to this slide in a specific? Is there any question? No, all right. So as I uh, was telling to you in the chat, right, or in the WhatsApp chat, uh, my name is Marta, right? You can call me teacher or Miss Marta, the one that you like the most, uh, well, Marta Campos. But uh, you can call me Marta or teacher Marta or Miss Ray, or just only teacher, the one that you feel comfortable with. So um, every time that if you have any question, feel free to do an interruption. There is not any problem, right? Raise your hand or talk to me and I'm going to give you the word. So ready to get started? Estamos listos para comenzar? Yes. Yes, yes, I, yes awesome. I ready. Yeah, that's wonderful. So let's get started. And in the session number one, if you have already explored your virtual platform, you might know that is the name of time to remember. And we are gonna be in a studying a little bit about the simple past tense, right? Simple past tense, something that probably you have already studied in the previous course that was uh, the last basic one that you have. And we are gonna have just a conversation and please, listen the conversation right this is a conversation and the name is where did you learn to skate i'm gonna share the audio with you and i will appreciate it that you can let me know that if you are able to hear it right unit one are you able to hear it yes no yes 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 awesome so please uh, listen in and scan the conversation, take notes about the words that you might have any doubt, and then we are going to discuss. A time to remember. Page two, exercise two, conversation. Where did you learn to skate? Part A, listen and practice. Oh, oh. 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 I'm really sorry. Are you okay? I'm fine, but I'm not very good at this. Neither am I. Hey, I like your shirt. Are you from Argentina? Yes, I am originally. I was born there. Did you grow up there? Yes, I did, but my family moved here 10 years ago, when I was in middle school. And where did you learn to skate? Here in the park. This is only my third time. Well, it's my first time. Can you give me some lessons? Sure. Just follow me. By the way, my name is Ted. And I'm Anna. Nice to meet you. All right. So what about this conversation? What did you get about the conversation between Ted and Anna? Any word that calls your attention or anyone that in this case that it will be with the pronunciation? <laughs> Would you like to listen it once again? Yes, 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 y
All right. Yes. Unit one, a time to remember. Page two, exercise two, conversation. Where did you learn to skate? Part A, listen and practice. Oh, 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 I'm really sorry. Are you okay? I'm fine, but I'm not very good at this. Neither am I. Hey, I like your shirt. Are you from Argentina? Yes, I am originally. I was born there. Did you grow up there? Yes, I did, but my family moved here 10 years ago, when I was in middle school. And where did you learn to skate? Here in the park. This is only my third time. Well, it's my first time. Can you give me some lessons? Sure. Just follow me. By the way, my name is Ted. And I'm Anna. Nice to meet you. All right. So the conversation has finished between Ted and Anna. Any questions so far regarding to the conversation or everything is clear? Everything yeah, is fine? Fine. Yes. 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 Okay, so I'm going to take uh, that just as a yes from everyone, right? Does someone would like to participate that wants to be Ted and the other one wants to be Anna to go ahead and do the conversation? One of you or two of you? Okay, who would like to do it? I am Ted. Okay, thank you, Miguel. Who wants to be Anna? Me, Me teacher. Anna. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. Okay, Anna, it's gonna be Anna. Wonderful. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, Miguel, you're going to be Ted, and Anna, it's gonna be Anna. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, I am really sorry. Are you okay? I'm fine, but I'm not very good at this. Neither and I. Hey, I like you, shirt. Are you from Argentina? Yes, I am originally. I was born there. Did you grow up there? Yes, I did. But my family moved moved here 10 years ago when I was in middle school. And where did you learn to stay? Here in the, in the park. This is only my third time. Well, it's my fine time. Can you write me some lessons? Sure, just follow me. By the way, my name is Ted. And I'm Anna. Nice to meet you. Okay. Thank you very much. Good job. Excellent job, right? A plus is for you. So some of the pronunciations there, right? This one is grow up. 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 The word up, right? Up. 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 It's like if you have uh, an A instead of a U. So did you grow up there? 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 Remember that just no questions, right? Raising intonation. Just remember, right? Just no questions, raising intonation, WH questions, falling intonation. So you gotta be careful with that. So this one, uh, the correct pronunciation of this word is learn, 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 learn. Where did you learn to skate? Where did you learn to skate? Where did you learn to skate? So this one, be careful, learn, learn. Where did you learn to skate? Where did you learn to skate? Yes. Good what job. You okay. Excellent. Thank you for everyone who is repeating. So remember, WH questions, falling intonation, the stress of the word is going to be in the WH question, and then you're going to go down. And the stress of the word here is going to be at the end of that one, and the intonation is going to go up. So let's see. Uh, in this one, right? Does someone talk or they got the, the microphone open? Uh, is there any question or it was just the microphone open from someone? Yes, right, was the microphone open. Okay, so let's see, uh, this one in, uh, this one is first, 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 
first. 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 Yes. First. So this first. one, if you're still having just like a kind of difficulty on pronounce the contractions, you can say it in the long form. It is my first time. Or it's my first, it's time. My first time. Yes. It's so, my first time. It is, well, yes. it is my first time. Exactly. It yes. Um, if you have field. some difficulties, right, pronunci in pronunciation with the contractions, do it with the whole form. Because with the contractions, you got to be careful. You got to need to pronounce the S so we can know that it's a contraction and then they pass on the words, right? And this one. Can you get me some lessons? Can you get me some lessons? Can you get me some lessons? Right. So let's speak her Can you give me some lessons? Excellent. Can you Can... give me some lessons? Good job. Can you give me some lessons? Yes, some lessons, right? Some lessons. Some lessons. Lessons. Exactly. Yes. yes. So those ones were the only ones that I was able to hear. Besides that, you do it really good and just congratulations because of that right is there any question or something regarding to this specific slide do you have any question no oh, everything is fine okay so let's go exactly on what we're gonna be studying on besides this um dialogue just a quick question more that anyone else wants to participate if you want to just in case that you want to before that I go on the next slide or can I go on the next slide? You tell me. Yes, we go to the next slide. Okay. Yes, the next slide. Yes. All right, good. So we are gonna have the past tense, right? Which is gonna be a study. In the previous course, probably you studied the past tense and the past tense of the be. Basically, the past tense of the be is like the simple present of the be, but just in past. Most likely, we use it for the same things, right? And we have the same structure with the only difference that here we are going to be using was and where instead of am, um, is, are, right? So the structure for questions, for affirmative and for negative, they are the same, right? Basically, they are the same. So we are gonna have our personal pronoun, then we are gonna have the verb be, and after that, we are gonna have an adjective in this case, or you might have just a noun on it. The only exception on that one is that in the personal pronoun I, it's gonna be included with the third person singular that is he, she, and it, because we are gonna be using was, right? instead of another one. For this one, we don't have any specific um, like a difference on the verb be. We are not gonna have any one. We are gonna include it in the third personal, for the third person singular that is gonna be on was. And this one in this part in the past tense is gonna be the only exception in the one, the I or the personal pronoun I, it's gonna be included with he, she, and it, right? Besides the other ones, they are going to be completely separated. By any change, do you remember this or you don't, or you would like to do a deep recap on it? You tell me. Mm -hmm. Or if you want me to repeat it in Spanish as well, I can go ahead and do it. You tell me, don't be afraid to tell me, right? Or if you think that I'm talking too fast, right, as well, tell me. You can speak Spanish for this, please? Yeah, of course, right? ¿Qué es lo que sucede acá? ¿verdad? Tenemos el past tense del be. El be es como el que estudiamos al principio de los básicos, que es el verbo ser o estar. Es lo mismo acá, solamente que esto estuvo o esto fue, ¿verdad? Sería el significado. En el presente, en el be del pasado, el pasado del be va a ser was y were. Si ustedes recuerdan, um, let me open up um, a new document. Because I don't have a whiteboard, right? I'm sorry. Let's see. 
we are gonna use a document. And we are gonna have it a little bit there. So B, right? Let's remember B. We used to have um, is R. Solíamos tener para el B, verdad, lo que era am, is, are. And in this one was simple present. Right? This one was simple present of B, right? So the keyword here is present, right? Eso era para el presente simple del B y la palabra clave aquí es presente, ¿verdad? Eso era para el presente. Entonces, eh, si le queríamos dar un significado a nuestro español, esto, esto es o esto está, ¿verdad? Si fuese así, ¿verdad? Si estuviéramos hablando de algo como una especie de significado. Esto es o esto está, que es el verbo ser o estar. En el, en el presente simple, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, tenemos lo mismo, ¿verdad? Tenemos lo mismo. We got the same personal pronouns, right? Um, personal pronouns. So we got our personal pronouns. The personal pronouns that we know are I, you, we, they, they are she and it right there are the third persons and for the very b as we might remember we were using for i we were using um for you you were using r yeah. this one was the again yeah. r they yes. are yeah is it is and it is right so there we go so here we have the simple present right and with the verb be and this one uh we might remember it say yo soy yo estoy tú eres tú estás ustedes son ustedes están nosotros somos nosotros estamos ellos son verdad ellos están y así sucesivamente con las terceras personas también ahora qué es lo que sucede también vi tiene un pasado y su pasado en este caso eh, se considera un verbo irregular verdad why do we consider as irregular verb? Everything that is gonna be regular is because it changed the way that is written and as well the way that we speak to. En el caso de las cosas irregulares, ¿verdad? Porque se van a dar cuenta que existen muchas cosas que se llaman irregulares, ya sea de, de lo que son los... Um, Los, los adjetivos o los nombres y también de los verbos que existen los verbos irregulares es porque se cambia su forma de escritura y la forma en la que nosotros lo pronunciamos. Entonces el verbo be a su pasado se considera un verbo irregular porque cambia su forma y su escritura, ¿verdad? No la mantiene. Entonces esto es simple pass of be. Esto sería el pasado del B, ¿verdad? And here the keyword is past. Y acá la palabra clave que nosotros tenemos es pasado, ¿verdad? Entonces, si quisiéramos darle una um, especie de significado, esto fue, ¿verdad? O esto estuvo. Si usted quisiera darle como una especie de significado y acá pues lo clave es estuvo o fue. Ahora bien, acá viene algo especial. De nueva cuenta vamos a tomar nuestros eh, pronombres, ¿verdad? Vamos a tomar los pronombres y voy a copiar y pegar acá abajo. Vamos a tomar nuestros pronombres. Para el B nosotros sabíamos que existían am, is, are. Pero sin embargo, para el pasado del be solo existe was y were. Y es aquí donde nosotros vamos a incluir el I en el was. Y de allí pues los demás, por ejemplo, va a ser you were. You were. We were. 
they were, she was, she it was, was, and it was, it was, it was, it was. Y acá es donde nosotros tenemos, ¿verdad? Lo que es el pasado. Entonces, en este pasado del verbo be es en el único donde se va a incluir junto con la misma forma de las terceras personas en singular al pronombre I, que es el pronombre yo, ¿verdad? Entonces, pues ahí tenemos esta parte. Is there any question so far? ¿Hay alguna pregunta? No. No, teacher, it's clear. It's clear. Good. Yes. Awesome. So let's see. Can I go back to the presentation? Puedo regresar a la presentación? All right. Yes. Awesome. Cool. So here, this is what we have, right? Uh, here we have a little bit about of the structure. Acá podemos ver que tenemos un poquito de estructura, right? So we are going to have the personal pronoun plus the verb be in simple past plus a noun, right? Or an adjective in the case. As well in the affirmative sentence, right? If you want to convert a chestnut question, what you only do is swap, right? You place the verb be at the beginning and then the personal pronoun and after that your adjective or your noun. In the WH questions, you're gonna have first the WH question, then the verb be, the subject and the complement that is gonna be a noun or an adjective, right? You can right. use constructions yeah, or not use them. Well, it depends been. on you, right? That's In the true. negative sentences or for the answer of the just no questions. Questions about the simple past of the B, if you have them. Preguntas acerca del pasado del B, si la si hay, or any doubt. For the moment, no, teacher. Doubt. No, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. All good. All right. All right. So if everything is okay, let's continue. So here, this is what you have in the virtual platform or with what the virtual platform is started on with the past tense, right? That's what we have there. What happened with the past tense? In the past tense, if we want to do it with the verb be, we have already seen it, how it's going to be the structure. However, if we want to have a better option verb, it's going to be a little bit different. Let me go to the document. So here, this is what we have. I'm going to go a little bit down more. Mm -hmm. Let me have here. Okay. Simple pass, like simple pass, right? What happened with the simple pass? You're gonna have verbs that are gonna be regular and irregular. Irregular. And you're gonna have an auxiliary, which is gonna be the verb do, but in simple pass, that is gonna be be, right? So this auxiliary, most likely you're gonna be using it for questions, right? And negative. Mm -hmm. And negative statements, right? So, okay. Let me ask for the help here, here, here. <laughs> So you're gonna have it for questions and negative statements, right? So that is what we have on the simple past. This is for something that happened in the past and it stopped in the same point in the past, right? So that it would be basically the use of it. What happened with this? We are gonna have a subject plus the verb in simple past, right? Simple pass plus a complement, right? 
plus a complement plus the point at the end. Don't forget the point is, is the way that says that your sentence has finished, right? So remember that, that you need to have a point there at the end because your sentence has been finished after that. And here is something interesting, right? We are gonna use the verb go, right? The verb go. So for the verb go, it's an irregular verb, right? So the verb go in simple past is wind. And in the past participle, it's gonna be gone. Right. So for the simple past, we are going to be using this one, the one that is in italic, right? This one. Or let me place it in another color, the one that is in green color, right? So for the subject, in the subject, you might have anything that you want to a name, a noun, or in this case, just a personal pronoun. And we are gonna be using the personal pronoun, plural form, they, right? They, dígame Gerardo. So, uh, one question, and the verb go and the simple past is when, is only this form when, don't, don't use for the simple past. Yes, uh, just only when gone, it's going to be your past participle. Oh. You are going to be using it when you, when we are going to be in a studying, if I'm not mistaken, it's in the number four, we are going to be in a studying present perfect. So you are going to be using gone for uh, the person perfect and as well for the past perfect. The only difference there is going to be the auxiliary that you're going to be using. Because for the auxiliary, you're going to be using have instead of did, right? Yes. But for simple past, it's just only this one. If you Google it, right, uh, some list of the verbs in regular form, you are going to have the base form, the past form, and the participle form. They are called this one participle, right? So the participle form is for the perfect tenses, right? That's uh, what you need to remember. Just the participle form or the term form is for the perfect tenses. A recommendation is started to get and list from the simple past tense or from the verbs in simple past that are irregular ones, because there is no way or any other way to learn them by heart to identify them, right? You. Yes, you're more than welcome. Sí, verdad, so, eh, se los voy a decir en Spanish, eh, si pueden googlear en una lista de los verbos en pasado, ¿verdad? Los irregulares de especial manera, puesto que no hay otra manera, ¿verdad? Que solamente aprendérselos para poder identificarlos. Entonces, este, no si no sabemos identificar entre un regular y un irregular, vamos a cometer un error gramatical, ¿verdad? Que tal vez no va a ser escuchado cuando usted lo hable, eh, va a ser tomado como tal, Pero en el caso de la escritura, cuando si usted le evalúa una escritura en un examen, pues se lo van a marcar como malo. Entonces debemos de tener eh, bastante cuidado con lo que es la escritura. So let's see. Is there any other question before that we continue? No. Nope. Teacher. Sí. Yeah. Um, uh, example uh, with gone. With gone. Go ahead, tell me. Si usted tiene uno, dígame. Or do you want me to give one? O usted desearía que yo les dé uno. Yes, teacher. Yes, yes teacher. Right. Yes. Okay, uh, con gone, right? I'm going to go down. Me voy a ir hacia abajo, pues eh, no quiero confundirlos acá. I'm going to go down. Uh, con gone, it's going to be for present perfect, right? Present perfect. Y en este caso, eh, I'm going to tell you in Spanish. Se los voy a decir en español. El presente perfecto, ¿verdad? Se compone de un sujeto más el auxiliar have 
or has, que tiene la misma función que el verbo, ¿verdad? Como ustedes lo vieron en sus módulos básicos, have or has, más el ver in past participle, plus the complement, ¿verdad? Entonces acá tenemos esto. Entonces ella podría, podríamos decir, she has gone to the church since last year. ¿Verdad? Y acá tenemos un ejemplo. She has gone to the church since last year. Ella ha estado asistiendo a la iglesia desde el año pasado, ¿verdad? En el caso del presente perfecto, puede sonar como si esto pasó en el pasado. Pues sí, la primera visita, ¿verdad? Pasó en el pasado, pero es una acción que se mantiene desde ese punto del pasado hasta el presente. Entonces es como una acción en recurrente, ¿verdad? No está en futuro, no está como que en presente simple, sino que es una acción que tuvo un punto en su pasado y continúa pasando en el presente, va a continuar en el futuro y así sucesivamente, ¿verdad? Entonces, este sería en presente perfecto y para eso se ocupan los verbos en pasado participio, ¿verdad? Que sería la tercera columna, por decirlo así. Y when, when I use the when, You're when gonna be a... using when when it's gonna be in the simple past, right? That is the one that we have in the in up in the in the page, right? In the upper page. So I'm gonna telling you at the moment. You let me know if I can go up. Ustedes me dicen si puedo ir hacia arriba porque en algunos pues veo que pueden, están apuntando. Entonces puedo subir nuevamente. Yes, teacher. Yes. All right. Yes, teacher. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. So when this one, right, the one that we have in green color, we are going to use it in simple past. So we can say they went to the church last Sunday, for example. ¿Verdad? Se, ellos fueron a la iglesia el domingo pasado. ¿Y qué pasó acá? Pues esto pasó el domingo y ahí se detuvo. ¿verdad? Ya no continúa. Ya no hubo una continuidad de, la, de lo que es la acción, ¿verdad? It didn't continue. It started in the past and finished in the past. So it stays there. So here is where you are going to use in it, right? The when. Most likely you're going to have this one as well next to when, right? This preposition that is to. So you're going to have it next to always. So basically every time that you are you're going to use go, when, or gone, you're going to be using the preposition too, right? So it's something that it has attached to it. Probably it might not appear every time when you Google it, but it's there always, right? It's there always. Yes. Questions so far regarding to this one? Is there any questions so far regarding to this one? Uh, for the, the structure for the, the, she has gone to the shore since last year in the simple, in the simple past. Uh, uh, say, She, she, she was, she was, she was to the church since last year. Okay. Okay. Um, here there is something that you need to get on it. For the different tenses that you are going to have, you are going to have time markers. In reality, if we put this one 
according to the grammar, it's gonna be like a kind of, okay. However, in minute, it doesn't, because we have scenes, right? So we say, she went to the church since last year. Here, it doesn't have any sense, the tense, right? The affirmative sentence doesn't have any sense because since is desde, right? Desde. Y acá, eh, la oración, la acción ya terminó. No sigue pasando. Eh, I'm going to say it in Spanish, right? Se los voy a decir en español. Todos los tiempos tienen sus marcadores de tiempos. En el caso de since, uh -huh. since es en específico para los perfectos. Los perfectos tienen esa habilidad de que por lo general hay una acción que comienza en un punto, pero sigue pasando, a pesar de que puede significar que ya terminó. Si yo tengo esta oración gramaticalmente hasta acá, yo la tengo bien. Pero si yo le agrego el since, yo le quito significado. Porque este Teacher. since es desde last year, diga. Teacher. For example, as I say, she went to the church only one year. That is something different, it's right? Mistake, it's a mistake. That is going to be something different. What I need to do here is erase these scenes and just leave last year, right? last year because these actions in the simple past the actions started in the past and stopped in the past okay. yes the the difference is scenes exactly the scenes what happened is that the scenes is a time marker for the perfect times right for the perfect time so you are going to be able to see it we have seen we have yet and we have some others that at this moment, I really apologize, I don't remember them, but the most common ones are since and yet, right? So those ones, they have that ability that says that since last year, she's been in the church every, every Sunday, let's say it like that, right? It started last year, and since last year, she hasn't stopped going, right? So okay. basically, uh, here in this one, what happened is that last year she went to the church. This year we haven't seen her, right? So basically last year was the last time that she went to it. And this year, we don't know nothing about her, right? So basically in the other one, I see her every Sunday. In this one, I saw her last year and I never seen her anymore, right? Okay. En el caso, yes. En Teacher, el caso, tía. The uh, marker, the uh, present time, uh, perfect time, is only since, or oh, is various. There are some other ones. Uh, the most common ones are since and yet. There are some other ones, right? That you are gonna be able to find it. What happened is that there are different ways to identify different tenses. Most likely is by their, uh, by their auxiliary or the form of the bird, right? How is the bird doing? And as well, the complements or the time markers, right? So this one, um, since, and there is another one that is jet right that is jet in this case um they are most likely using in the perfect tense so you are gonna we are gonna be studying it if i'm not mistaken it's there is in the no in the session number four we are gonna be studying the person perfect so probably we will be able to see all of the time markers that they have so if you want to identify exactly what type of tense or what tense are you talking on? You need to first identify which is the auxiliary and the verb or the form of the verb that you have, right? And as well, what does it mean? Let's remember that every tense has their own use. 
So not all of them are using for everything in the same, right? All of them have their different use and in the different uses, you're gonna be able to identify what are you talking about or what do you want to mean by the sentence, right? So you need to be careful about that. Is okay. there any question? Oh, you tell me, I'm sorry. Thanks, teacher. Thanks. You're welcome. So regarding to this, is there any question or something else? For the moment, is 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 clear, teacher. It's clear. Okay, yes. that's wonderful. So then here we have right. This ones are gonna be affirmatives, right? These are affirmatives, right? Basically, yes. they are affirmative. Then we are gonna have the negative, right? So on the negative, let me do this. Um, and let me add something here. The auxiliary, right? Plus the complement. So these ones are gonna be negative, right? We are gonna have them negative. And I'm gonna place here affirmative. Affirmative, and here we got negatives. Here we go. Let me place another color so we can have different colors on it. All right, so there we go. Here we have negatives. And I'm gonna do, right, the same examples that we have here. So I'm gonna just copy and paste them. So here, this is what happened, right? Here it says that we are gonna have our subject plus the auxiliary plus the bird in the base form plus the complement plus the point at the end of the sentence. What is gonna happen? Whenever we are gonna have uh, the negative, we are gonna have the auxiliary did mm -hmm. plus not, sorry, I forget something here, plus the not, right? plus the bird in the paint's form. Go to, right? So here we have the go to. I'm gonna do it a little bit. Mm, Jesus Christ. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna have the verb, the auxiliary, plus the not, plus the bird in the base form that is going to be, once again, go to the church, right? Same is gonna happen in the third person, right? Here, what we have is that we don't have any differences on the third person. So you are not gonna have any confusion that is gonna be using for this one and the other one, no. So in here, the same auxiliary is for most likely all of the personal pronouns, right? Can you do the contraction? Of course, you can do the contraction. It's up to you, right? We'll give you a recommendation. Contraction, just only using it when you are talking. Whenever you are writing, try to get accustomed to write it down in the correct form or in the full form of the verbs, right? Why? Because it's necessary when you are doing formal documents or any type of document, it's better that you can have the full form instead of the contractions, right? Here, uh, you apologize. This is just like a kind of accent, not the apostrophe. The apostrophe should be straight, but my computer doesn't generate it, right? For some reason, I don't know why. So let's see. Is there any question regarding to this one? Negatives. Hay alguna pregunta con las negativas? Give me just one second. Teacher, when you use didn't, is more informal. That's correct. That's true. When you use the contraction, it's informal, but in the right and form. When you are talking, when you are talking, I'm sorry, you can use the constructions as long as is possible. It's better for the speaking time. However, in this case, for the ones that uh, are writing, 
documents or formal documentation, it's better to add in the full form. Yes. Yes. That's true. Okay. Is there any questions so far or are we okay on this one? Is that okay? Yeah. It's okay, teacher. Okay. It's okay. Good. Okay. So that's wonderful. So let me go to the presentation and we are gonna do this together. So for you to remember, right, since we are talking about the affirmative and negative sentences, here is something that you need to remember. Regular versus spelling rules. As we were studying, we are going to have regular and irregular verbs. What happened with the regular verbs? In the regular verbs, you need to do the spelling way so we can identify them. That in the affirmative sentence, we are talking about past, right? Most likely, it's going to be that you're going to add the ED at the end. Right, so the verbs that are ending in this case in like K, Y, etc., you are going to be adding ED. That's what is going to happen. So at the end, right? The verbs that are ending in E, you are just going to be adding the D. If you have, for example, a consonant plus a Y, so what is going to happen is that the Y is going to be erased and you are going to give the substitution for the letter I and you are going to add ED, like in this ones, carry or study, right? Those ones are going to be like a kind of the rule. Then we are going to have some verbs ending in a single consonant. What is happening here? In this type of verse, what you are going to do is double the last consonant and add ED, right? This one's in a single consonant and the letter is a vowel, right? So we have here, for example, single consonant, a vowel before, so we double the last consonant. A vowel, single consonant, double the vowel, right? I'm sorry, double the consonant and add ed. So these ones are like a kind of the uh, general rules on the regular verbs, right? Regular verbs, no irregular ones, right? Regular verbs. So in the regular verbs, you're gonna be doing this, right? Questions so far about this? Teacher, for example, play don't change because uh, is A, is vowel and G, is consonant. Why? Why, right? The why play. is a consonant. Play, yes. The why, the pronunciation was, how do you say? Uh, how do you say? Why? 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 why. 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 Yes, okay. this one. It's a why. Yes. Why? Yes. All right. Is there any questions so far about this or everything is fine? For the moment, it's fine, teacher. Everything is fine, good. So you let me know if I can go down to the next slide. Can I continue in the next slide? You tell me. Uh, wait, a, wait a minute, teacher. All right, sure. Teacher, could you share this presentation for the WhatsApp group? Sure, definitely. I can okay. go ahead and send it for you. Yep. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay. There we go. All right, okay. you tell me whenever you're ready. I'm ready. Good. So let's see. Here we have 
some verbs, right? We are gonna do them together. Um, we are going to place here uh, each of the verbs in the simple past tense, right? So for example, do, what is the simple past of do? Does anyone know? Did. Did, right? What about buy? Buy, yeah. Boat. Good, excellent. No. Both, right? What about come? Hey, hey, good job. Come, come. What about here? Her. 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 How? Can you spell it for me? H E A R D. Your D. Okay. D. 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 Okay. Someone says D. Oh, Daniel. D of Daniel. D of Daniel. Heard. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Heard. What about this one? What about yes. this one? Yeah. Do you know what is this one? Oh. Sabemos que es este? The meaning, uh, no, I don't know. Oh. Okay. Feed is uh, what we do. Uh, if you have a pet, for example, like me, I do have a cat. So every morning I feed it, right? So I put okay. the little thing and I put the, you know, the cap chips and everything. So they started. So I feed it. What it will be? ¿Qué significaría? Alimentación. Alimentar, ¿verdad? Dar de comer, básicamente, ¿verdad? Prácticamente este es el verbo alimentar eh, para lo que es a los animalitos, ¿verdad? ¿Y cómo sería? Es mm. this one. Le había dejado en el What about this one? Do you know what is this one? Hurt. Hurt. The same? Mm -hmm. It's the same. Good job. Hurt. Hurt. What about this one? Forgot. Forgot, Forgot right? Forgot. Okay, good job. Forgot. What about this one? Grot. 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 What about this one? Thought. Talk, right? Uh, what about this one? Spoke. Spoke, right? Spoke. Okay. Please correct me if it is with double O or just one O. Does anyone remember? Just one. Just one, right? Me, yes. me only. Yes, only just o. one. One O only, right? Thank you. Okay, so is there any question about this one? Hay alguna pregunta acerca de esto? Si la tiene. Is there any question? No, everything is good. Teacher, teacher mm -hmm. it, they are uh, irregular verbs. Uh, the uh, many chains. Yes, uh, many of them, and they will change in a very uh, just like a kind of um, different way, right? They are going to be changing a lot in the pronunciation and in the writing form, right? So that's why my recommendation that you can start checking on a list so you can have them, right? You can have them. Yeah. You need to learn them by heart. All right, so if there is not any question, we are gonna do it to the next um, slide. That is gonna be this one, right? 
So these ones are regular ones. It says, right, ED, D, I, E, D, and double consonant plus ED. So let's see, Mary, in which one? Third. In the third one, how it will be? Mary. Married. Okay. Mary. Let me see. How big can I go on this one? Okay. All right, let's see. What about like? Like second column. It is. Second column. Yes, column. Okay. Like, right? Because like it's ending in E, which is only at the D. D. Right? Okay. D. What about try? The third. The third. The third one, right? To try it. Tried. Okay. Yeah. Good job. What about a stop? Fake. Teacher and fake in the first. Oh, the I'm bake. sorry. Bake. Mm -hmm. Right. Bake. Bake. Where bake. is it? Bake. Ah, in the second. One. In the second yes. one, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Bake. Good job. Sorry. What about stop? In the first one? To build. The, the first, the, the second one, the third, or the, the fourth one? In the first. It feels stupid. The first? In the, the la, You're the sure? Uh, the, the fourth last. one. The fourth. The fourth one, right? Let's yes. remember that it says the fourth one. Consonant. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, vowel, single consonant, vowel. right? Okay. Stop. Stop. Right? Stop. So there we go. What about plan? Oh, I'm sorry, meet. Meet. The, the first one? In the first one. Thanks. What about plan? In the fourth, fourth one. In the fourth one, right? I'm going to tell you a secret. Our time is done. Do you want to finish? If you decided, we can finish. Just this exercise. Or if you want to go, we are free to go. Finish. Okay, so let's do the repeat, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's going to be located right here. Repeat, I'm oh, sorry. The first one? In the first one, right? Repeat. Let's repeat. What about the second one? Well, the, almost the last one. Worry. What about worry? There's one. In the first one. Worry? Worry. So in the, the, third. the third one, right? That's correct. The third one. Ah, okay. Yes. Worry. Oh, yes. Yeah. What about the side? In the second one. The first. In the first the or the second one? The second one, right? The second one. The second. Right. Second one. Okay. And the last one. We just only have one space more. The, the, the first. The first one. The first. The fourth one or the first one? Fourth. The first one. one. The first one. Okay. Traveler. Traveler. Okay. There is something that you need to remember. It depends where the word is going to be stressed. You can double the L or you can simply leave it like that. Right. En el caso de esta palabra, va a depender de donde usted lleve el estrés. Así usted puede doblar la L o simple y sencillamente dejármelo tal cual, ¿verdad? Cual. Tal cual. Doble L británico. Una L americano. Y va a depender oh, donde yeah. lleve el estrés. Sí. 
So it can be done it like that, right? So here we have, thank you very much for staying a little bit more while we were finishing this exercise. I promise to be aware of the time. Les prometo estar más verdad pendiente del tiempo para no hacerlos eh, quedarse minutos extra. So here we have, I don't know if you have any question for tomorrow or you let me know on the chat before that we go. Okay, okay. thank you. Teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. You are welcome. So have a good, good night. night. We will see us tomorrow. Take care. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye.